if you caught last week's show, you watched us spend eight days in one of the most pristine parts of northern Alberta. We had flown into a small remote lake to try and break our moose hunting curse. We thought that we had done everything right and put ourselves in the best position for success. But the closest thing we saw to a moose was a giant old black bear early in the trip that we had decided to pass. It was a fantastic weekend camp with great friends and an experience that we will always cherish. But for Darcy and myself, it didn't end there. You see, we have always been very competitive growing up, and there is one thing that we both have a hard time accepting, and that's defeat. So less than 24 hours after returning to civilization, Darcy and myself were once again boarding a smaller plane and heading into another remote lake for one last try. The weather was turning, and winter was coming. We were only going to have a short window of time before the lakes froze over and we were stranded. Being stubborn and persistent, we went against everyone's advice and headed back in. But this time, we may have pushed our luck too far. The only reason we're back up here is because the day that we left, we got sopped in with weather and the weather dropped substantially. We actually had to bust through ice getting onto here this morning. And if it stays cold, we might not be able to get out of here, so. But it's the first week of October. We know the moose are going crazy. Jared with North Point Outfitters is killing moose left, right, and center. So we came back up, just me and Darcy this time. We couldn't even make it to where we wanted to camp because of the ice, so he had to dump us off on the edge of this muskeg. So we're blowing up the Marlin boat, and we're gonna have to pack camp another couple hundred yards into some higher ground. Check it out, a brand new lake. We did a loop with the plane and it looks a lot better, so I don't know what to say. We're, we're just here to give it another shot. I hate losing and I hate giving up. I burnt my last two moose tags. I don't want to burn a third one. But we need to hurry up and get this thing blown up and get over there before the wind picks up too much. And we got to start a fire because we're wet, cold. We don't even have a warm tent to sleep in. We just have our little tiny four pound backpacking tent, little two person. So if the weather gets cold, Things could get bad pretty quick. When we were flying over the lake, we spotted that there looked like a cabin or some kind of shack. And I didn't really expect it to be completely destroyed, but this is a really old cabin and there's all kinds of stuff all over. The bears made a huge mess. It's kind of mouse infested and but it's pretty cool. I wonder what kind of stories this kind of cabin has. Probably a lot of laughs. A lot of animals. Lots of beers. Lots of beers, there's beer cans everywhere. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. We're actually gonna camp just on the hill beside the cabin because it's kind of nice high ground up here, so. But it's neat finding something like this in the middle of nowhere. This lake is actually fairly big. It's a little bit bigger than the one we were at last week. Um, so we're gonna try for a few days at this end of the lake and then if we don't have any luck We're gonna maybe pack up camp and go over to the other end of the lake to try over there um, But I think as soon as it calms down like if there's a moose in the area, he should hear us so It's just a little bit windy right now, so We'll get camp set up And we'll see if we can survive the night. I'm sure we will but <laughs> Might not be fun it's gonna be chilly. I never thought we'd be using a little tiny two-man backpacking summer tent the first week of October in the far reaches of northern Alberta. I feel like we're in for some very cold sleepless light nights.
lunch and supper for the next six or seven days. Hopefully less. Hopefully we have more steaks and then go home. But if not, it's rice and chicken, spaghetti and meat sauce, Jack Link's beef jerky, and yucky lake water. Yellowish green boiled beaver fever infested lake water. Hopefully we just kill a moose. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Top Grade Construction, Black Widow Innovations, Vortex Optics, Covert Scouting Cameras, Old Smokes Coffee, and the Municipal District of Bonneville. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Dory River Outfitters, Saskatchewan's premier bear destination. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Deluxe Waltons, built in Canada for Canadian conditions. We had a pretty bad situation just happened. It's our very first morning out here, and it's cold. And because we don't have the Deluxe Waltons, we're in a little backpacking tent. I didn't bring that many clothes because I thought we were going to have a deluxe small tent. So I'm literally wearing every piece of clothing that I have on this hunt. And we had just pulled into a spot for a morning hunt. And I went to get out of the boat to pull us up on shore. And somehow I lost my balance and I actually went overboard. And so at this point right now we're paddling back to shore as quickly as we can. Back to camp. Because I have to dry some clothes out with some really cold weather and some rain and, and some below freezing temperatures coming really quick. And as of right now, every piece of clothing that I own is soaked. So if I don't get them dried out, it's gonna get scary. So I gotta go back for the day and try and dry some of this out. This could be bad news. cold weather coming in and the fact that all my clothes are wet we're gonna have to find a way to get something that we can heat the old cabin there we've looked at it several times and if the stove would have been okay we could have used that and, and kind of made it work but without having a stove to contain a fire and the whole thing made it of wood that's incredibly dry you know one spark middle of the night that cabin will go up in flames so I'm not comfortable putting all our stuff in there and sleeping in there so we're gonna try and make a either a teepee or a bit of a cabin shape out of a tent and some of the tin and plywood we have the top half of the stove that we're able to put over on my little hole fireplace that I made and that'll allow us to contain the sparks and the fire and then it'll also allow us to connect a chimney pipe to go at the top so Without having the deluxe wall tent in camp, we had no choice but to construct a shelter that we could use to stay warm. A nasty winter storm was blowing in, and with my clothes being soaked from my clumsy fall into the lake, I honestly didn't know what the next few days were going to bring. We cut on his back? We're not the only ones that enjoy the heat of the tent. Somebody else found it. A little mouse. We're just gonna make something to eat real quick and venture out into the storm. I guess we'll try and find a track tonight, nothing's gonna hear us call, so we're just gonna try and go for a walk and see if we can find a track and maybe close the distance. Odds are definitely against us. When the weather finally cleared up, 
we were able to spend a solid four or five days giving it our all in this new area. We covered the entire lake by boat and hiked the surrounding ridges trying whatever we could to get an answer. Morning and evening, our calls echoed across the lake. I would definitely shoot that moose. But when it was all said and done, we had only seen one moose briefly out in the lake before disappearing into the cover. We had invested nearly 20 days and thousands of dollars into flights and gear to try and find a true remote northern Alberta moose. And for the third time in my life, I had burnt a moose draw without an opportunity. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, Deluxe Wall Tents, Top Notch Taxidermy, ExileOutdoors.com, Victory Archery, and Hornady Ammunition. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Top Grade Construction in Lloydminster, Alberta. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Vortex, the force of optics. They say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again while expecting different results. Well, to be honest, I'm not really sure if we're just stubborn or a little bit insane, and I hate to admit it, but exactly one year later, we were crawling out of a substantially more comfortable deluxe wall tent overlooking the exact same piece of lake that had cost us so much money and misery the year before. Oh, we we're gonna have a full load. To this day, I can't understand why we went back as we failed miserably in the week we spent here last season. But if I had to guess, I would say that it had a lot to do with proving to ourselves that we could do it. This time, we were better equipped and a year wiser. And we believed that we were prepared for anything that nature could throw at us. But when we crawled out of the deluxe wall tent on the very first morning of the hunt, well, we were proven wrong once again. I haven't been outside yet. Dana went out there really quick. It's a nice, cool, crisp morning. I'm sure we're going to see moose this week. We were at this same lake last year, um, and all we saw all week was uh, one cow on the lake. But the sign was crazy. There was, there was beds along the lake, and... All the willows were eaten off, and there was fresh chat tracks, and it's like literally everything you could ask for. So I know they're here. We just gotta put our time in, and hopefully one day there'll be a nice bull city standing on the side of the lake. That's what we want. As we tried to push the boat from shore that first morning, we became concerned at the amount of ice that had built up along the shoreline. Still pretty frozen. We couldn't see it with our headlamps, but as the sun eventually started to reveal the lake, we realized that we were in real trouble. What we thought was simply a crisp, cool October night turned out to be much worse and had frozen the entire lake solid with an inch of ice. And suddenly, we weren't excited about hunting for the rest of the week. Instead, we had to try and figure out a way to get home because we were stranded. With a few quick phone calls, we were able to arrange an expensive emergency extraction for later in the week. Until then, we were forced to hunt from shore and pray that the lake opened up before the end of the week. So we actually have three pictures of bulls now in the last week since we've been here. Um, that really big one and a smaller one. Um, actually, would that be four bulls then? Probably four. Yeah. Hiking through the soft muskeg morning and evening and not having access to the boat was really taking its toll on us. The weather wasn't warming up and our morale was low, 
But after almost 24 days in the wilderness over the past two years, it finally happened. He just crossed the line back there. He was right there, like right in the opening. Get around, get around. Take your time. Oh Ooh. my gosh! <laughs> Mercy. He's not going anywhere. Oh my gosh. Let's go off. Make sure he's not going anywhere. Let's leave my stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Go from his neck and go back to his body. Oh my gosh. Darcy, look at that thing. That's a giant bull. That is so crazy how that just worked out. He is like 50 yards from camp. Oh my gosh, yeah, our tent is literally up on that hill. We just left camp. We ate supper. We just crossed this creek like not even 10 minutes ago. And we were walking up that line. Oh my gosh, I'm out of breath. And every once in a while, I just happen to look back because I know moose cross lines. And all I saw was white and a moose cross the line. So I yelled at Dana. And sure enough, I was right where he crossed. And it seemed like he was in this opening. And here he was. Literally like the easiest pack out of life. <laughs> he is like 50 yards from our tent. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Dory River Outfitters, Phonescope, Matthews Archery, Wapiti River Outdoors, Eye Hunter, and Scree Gear. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by the MD of Bonneville. Lake adventures happen here. This segment of the show is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, a proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. This is crazy. <laughs> this is such a beautiful moose. Yeah, I know, they're really strong, right? This has to be the same one. Gotta be. This is so pretty. Let me just make sure he's good. Oh yeah, he's good. Oh my gosh, he's so big. Are you gonna be able to pick him up? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I probably can't even move this thing. Oh, he still has velvet on his horns, Dana. You rub it all oh my gosh! <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> this is definitely my dream moose. Like I know they come bigger than this, but this is this is once in a lifetime, and I am so blessed. This is I I almost want to cry. This is crazy. With the on. <laughs> I don't even want to start counting them. There's so many. I can't stop looking at him. Look at these massive scoops on his paddles. I've always dreamed of shooting a huge moose, <laughs> especially with two horns, because the last one I shot only had one. And to be way up here, northern Alberta, free chase moose all by ourselves, this is awesome. Like this is a huge blessing that it all worked out and I could, <laughs> it's just, I, I don't even know what to say. This is crazy. I can't wait to send pictures to my grandpa and my dad and my family. This is, this is awesome. He still has some velvet on him. He's literally up the, or right down the hill from camp. We're camped in the little deluxe wall tent, a nice 10 by, or yeah, 10 by 12, right on the hill here. And he just happened to be walking through this creek bed, which it is a really prime spot to be camping. I'm surprised we actually haven't seen moose in here before. Good old muskeg bush moose. Definitely not a prairie moose. <laughs> when we had this chance, 
which I, I still don't know how it worked out. I just happened to look back on the trail and there he was crossing the line. Wasn't interested in the call. I don't know if we, if we just missed the calling season or if we haven't hit it quite yet or he's clearly not hooked up with a cow, so I don't know, but. <laughs> Maybe Dana needs to practice his calling. <laughs> I was calling this morning too, but I don't think I'm any better. <laughs> this is gonna be like a ton of meat. I can't wait though. My whole family eats moose meat and I would be happy to share it, so. Ooh! <laughs> 